Hi, I'm Sonnet with Sonnet's Garden Blooms. I want to welcome you all to my channel. Today's video is going to be a thrift to treasure video. So I'm really getting excited for spring. I know we just got through the holidays, uh, but the next phase of all my booths will be the spring uh, flip. Um, I think everyone already is over winter here in Wisconsin. But uh, so what I did is I did like a whole spring vibe to my thrift to treasure uh, video today. So uh, I had a great response from my recent video and I will have it in the description below. Uh, the one where I took some books and created like a vintage uh, inspired book, um, like an antique vintage type feel. I used all the Iron Orchid design uh, molds and uh, they turned out awesome. I am very excited to get those in my booth along with the three items that I flipped today. So I used all uh, the IOD molds, I used the DIY paint, um, the waxes. So it was so much fun taking items that I got for like next to nothing and flipping them. But uh, so anyways, without further ado, let's go ahead and get this video started. If you haven't yet been to my channel though, I'm all about DIY furniture flipping, thrift hauls, thrift flips. If that is the type of channel that you do like, go ahead, give me a subscribe. Uh, if you like today's video, a thumbs up. Uh, let me know what you think of uh, the items that I flipped today and I hope you enjoy. So for my very first Flip. We are going to take this crock and I had found this on a thrift haul a while ago and I ended up paying 99 cents for it. Uh, what I'm going to start doing first of all is I am going to wash it really well and I am going to use the set Fleur de Lis and I love the bunny rabbit on here. Uh, so today in all my thrift flips, I am going to use many of the Iron Orchid design uh, molds and just use them in all different ways to show you how you can get so many uses out of these molds. They're so versatile. I absolutely love them. And just so you all know, all these items that I am using today can be found on my website um, at sonnetsgardenblooms.com. So I am gonna get started. We're gonna wash this baby up and I'm gonna show you how to use the molds. I have the container all cleaned. I washed it really well. I, oh, look at, I missed something on it, but I did wash it very, very well, dried it. And now we're going to start with the molds. Now, if you haven't used the Iron Orchid Design molds before, it does have this really nice lip around uh, the edges. And the lip really helps you get a very flat, um, yeah, flat image or flat uh, mold itself. It makes you have um, just really a crisp looking image. And that is one thing I absolutely love about uh, their molds. What I recommend is using some cornstarch and just taking a little bit and it just helps release the mold from, or the actual clay from the mold. And what we're gonna use today is the air dry clay. Uh, I've used a couple different clays um, and honestly the air dry clay from IOD is amazing. So I just like to take a chunk of it and work on smoothing it out of here and just start it working it into the mold. Um, what you also want to do is to prevent uh, the clay from drying out, uh, you want to put it into, once you open it up, I always seal it in a bag. And I did read recently, someone said um, to put even like a damp um, piece of paper towel in with it, um, just to make sure that it doesn't dry out. I've heard other, it has not happened to me where the any of the clay is dried out, but some people have said that it has for them. And one of the solutions was to put uh, the wet paper towel inside. 
So I'll have to try it, see if it works. So once I get this finished, I am going to take Type Bond, and that is by far my favorite glue uh, that works so well uh, with any of these molds. Uh, so I just um, use gravity and just pop that uh, bunny right out of the mold, and I'm going to flip the little bunny over, and like I said, just use the Type Bond. Um, but I want to position it first, um, and then I just uh, squirt a little bit on the back and rub it all over and then place it right where I want it. Um, I do let it dry um, for about an hour before I go ahead and then apply the paint. We're back to this project, and what I decided to do with this one, I love Apothecary, and I think it just reminds me of such a spring color. So what I'm going to do is we're going to go ahead, we're going to paint this all the apothecary, and I'm just going to paint the top as well, just around the, and I'm going to leave the inside just the way it is. And I'm going to come back and I'm going to distress this a little bit, wet distress it, just to bring out some of the darker color. And then we're going to use white wax and we're going to white wax it. This did require two coats of paint. Um, I always say about a coat and a half just because the coverage of DIY paint is so good. Um, but after I get done um, painting it, the two coats and letting it dry, then uh, once it's dry, I'm going to come in and I am going to wet distress it. Uh, so I just take a rag and I slightly wet distress areas, like all the raised areas, and... Um, it looks so cool. So here I am applying the wax and I always start with the clear wax first. That way when you're using any of the other waxes uh, like the dark wax or even the white wax, it is much easier to manipulate that wax. If you apply too much, you just use more clear wax to remove it. So here is the next project. And if you remembered, I picked this up. It was $5.99 and it had some, definitely some wear issues on here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm taking this red off to start with and I am going to dispose of that. Um, it did have some writing on here, but it was kind of broke up a hair. Um, so what I'm going to actually do, I'm going to take, I want this not to be too wore out or like fall out. So I'm going to take some wood glue. I'm going to pull it back. I'm going to put a little wood glue here. I'm going to pop it back in, let that dry. And then we are going to paint this up and give it some new life. So here I'm taking Cake Batter by DIY, and right away I'm like, oh, this is such a springy color. I absolutely love it, and I did apply two coats of the Cake Batter, and I didn't need to um, use any tape or anything. It was pretty easy to um, just work around that metal. I didn't want any paint on the metal. I still wanted that to show. And um, there were a few spots where I got it on the paint and I just took a wet paper towel and just wiped it off. Um, but uh, this is gonna be the perfect color for this piece. So while that's drying, I am going to take some of the air dry clay and I am going to roll it out. Uh, we are going to fill in that space, um, that, uh, that broken area, we're gonna fill in with this air dry clay. So I want the piece to be uh, roughly that big. Then we're gonna go in and we are going to take Kindest Regards, that stamp, and we are going to create that image on there. So you can see how cool that turned out. I am going to fit it in there and we are gonna glue it in place and uh, then let it dry. Um, just like we glue all the other pieces, just squirt some on, rub it about, and then we're gonna let that dry and then go back and paint it. 
I quickly decided the piece needed something else. I didn't really like how um, the, it didn't look finished to me. And the nice thing about the molds is that you can definitely layer these. So I went in with the classic elements mold and I'm using two different molds uh, or two different images from this mold. And I'm going to put this one on two different corners and then the other one on the other two corners. It really gives us a finished look and I just love it. Um, I also am taking, uh, there's those little beads um, on the right hand side, that beadwork, and I'm using that as well. So it just gives the whole piece a much more finished look. So I wanna show you what I did with this piece. I took a piece of the air dry clay, I rolled it out, I took an imprint of Kindest Regards stamp, so it left this beautiful impression in the clay. And then around the edges, I just wanted to add like a touch of something to finish it off. And I used classic elements again. And I used that on a couple of the projects today. So I used this piece right here for the, the two corners and then the opposite corners, I just used a different piece. I just think it turned out beautiful. And then to finish it off, just to add a little detail, I used um, the long um, little like dot piece. And a lot of this, um, these types of pieces are on like old vintage uh, dressers and mirrors. And um, then I uh, went ahead and I um, painted it all with the cake batter from DIY. And now I'm just letting the cake batter completely dry. It's almost dry. And then I'm going to go ahead and just add, a, I think, a little distressing around the edges. And then I'm going to go and do a clear coat. And then in here, I'm just going to add a little bit of white um, wax in here uh, just to make all the, work, the lettering pop and all the detail for these pieces pop a little bit too. So here I'm going in and I'm just wet distressing the entire piece, just touching the areas, like all the raised areas, um, just making it look like it has a real aged feel to it, uh, just real vintage. And I absolutely love how this turned out and how it brought back some of that dark wood. So now I'm taking DIY's clear wax and DIY's white wax, and I'm starting with the clear wax first. Uh, the one thing that I also should mention is uh, when you're using the waxes, uh, take them out of the container um, and then use the waxes. You don't want to contaminate the containers by dipping um, or like cross contaminate, I should say. Uh, but here um, you can see that the dark or the, the clear wax darkens it up a bit. Um, and it does appear to be a bit darker um, when it's not dry. So I have the clear wax on going in with the white wax and I white wax the whole piece. And then I go back and I remove um, quite a bit of that white wax just so that it um, brings out all the detail in those molds. So for our last project, I found these two pictures during my last haul. I only paid $2.99 each. I loved the pictures, but I didn't like the frames. So we're gonna go in, we are going to paint them in the color aviary. Um, the green matched perfect with the green in the actual pictures. Uh, we are going to give um, it one coat of paint at this point and let it dry and then go back and add some molds for the detail. So we are going to use two different molds um, to add the detail. I decided to add some leaves to the frame. I just think uh, with this being more of like an outdoor scenery with some trees, um, the leaves would be perfect. Uh, then I just thought to add a little bit um, more detail to the frame as well. We are going to use that beadwork like we did um, in the last project. This is such a beautiful detail. And you see it so often, like I had said, with vintage furniture, uh, it just adds so much to your project. 
So now the molds are complete and we are going to attach it with the tight bond. And then after that, we are going to let it dry. And then once it's dry, we're gonna come back and do that final coat of aviary. And from there, we are going to, um, I, I decided I wanted to do a wet distress just to bring back a little bit of that dark frame and then apply some white wax to finish it all off. So here I'm going in and I am applying that coat of paint, um, that second coat, uh, and it is a little bit difficult to get into all the detail of those little beads. Uh, the small brush that I'm using, I just picked up at the local Walmart. Uh, it definitely worked good. And if any of the paint did end up on the glass frame, um, after it was all dry, I just went in with some Windex and it came right off. Here going in and wet distressing this piece. I wanted just a little bit of the dark um, of that frame to pop through, just not a lot. And I'm doing uh, the wet distressing just on some of the raised edges. And uh, I just love how this turned out. So now we're doing the exact same thing. We're applying that clear wax and then going in and applying the white wax. And I just think these frames totally turned out amazing. I almost wanna keep them for myself. I just love them. I kept looking at them all day long and I just was thinking, wow, I cannot believe the transformation on these. And that white wax, I didn't use a lot, just a little bit. And I did a lot of that blending um, just to make all the details of that frame come pop out. And I definitely think I'm going to be doing this with some picture frames, just adding the molds to give it a little bit more detail. So what did you all think? I love using those molds. I hope you guys all enjoyed the video today. Uh, I can't wait to hear what you guys all think about those flips. I definitely am feeling springy. I know like here I'm wearing buffalo check, like uh, <laughs> I'm up in Wisconsin, winter wear. Um, but anyways, I will see you guys all Friday. I do have a little teaser. Um, for Valentine's Day. So I know it's just around the corner, but um, I always just try to add a little bit to my booths and the items that I am going to create for Valentine's Day, you're going to even be able to use possibly all year round. So be watching for that video Friday. You guys have a great week and we'll see you Friday. Bye.